Hello everybody, my name is Brian Darling, I'm the Regional Manager for Craftco. been with Craftco for 21 years. Today we're out here at our equipment plant. craftco has been in business since 1976 and we are the only manufacturer that manufactures the equipment and all the sealants to go with it. So we have a very keen idea how to make things work together when it comes from equipment and sealant. We're here at the plant today. We're going to go over some troubleshooting ideas, some things to get your machine up and running first thing in the morning, uh, pumping issues and things you'll run into uh, after your machine is sat over a long weekend. So we'll get started with that. So we want to start out this morning and just talk a little bit about some of the things you may run into that aren't necessarily mechanical with your machine, but more around the heat up and the loading of the material and getting started after a weekend and the machine is sat. We recommend you leave your tank about half full when you're going to leave it over a weekend or an extended period of time. Now if you have filled it up closer to the top or full and you get started in the morning, it looks like everything's liquid and you go out and start pumping and you run for about an hour and all of a sudden now you're not getting any more material, what may have happened, and you need to look inside your tank, is to see if you have a glob of material still hanging on the agitator and you didn't get it all completely melted at the start of the heat up. At this point you're going to need to shut, shut the pumping down and let that heat up more, get it all liquid inside, you may put a, another block or two of material in there to push the material that's hanging on the agitator down into the tank, get that all good and melted. So starting up on a Monday morning, it may take a little bit longer to make sure you've got all that material liquid before you go out and start pumping. Okay, so we're over here at the control panel. Once you get your machine started up in the morning, you've got your controls all set to the proper temperature, you're going to have to let the machine heat for about 45 minutes to an hour. Now keep in mind, your material hose will not start heating until the material gets to 275, and your pump is not going to unlock until the material and the hose and wand are up to 325. Now, that doesn't mean you're ready to pump. You still need to let the material get up to at least 380 to 400 degrees. Keep in mind also that when we're taking the temperature with our sensors, we're only sensing the outside edge of the tank and not the inside where the bulk of the cold material is going to be. So it may take a little bit longer, especially on a startup on a Monday morning or after a long weekend. So I want to let that material get good and hot and make sure we're fully melted all the way through on the tank. All right, now we're on the back side of the machine here. You've got your material all heated up. You're good, you're ready to go. And we're gonna get ready to start pumping. We always like to recommend coming over to your control panel and reversing the pump for about 30 seconds. That's gonna move the material away from your pump and then clear it so it can start pumping. You also should be able to hear the pump running in reverse when you do that. Then we wanna get ready to pump. You're gonna take your hose and wand and sit it up here in the cradle. You should have your wand tip up into the shoe box there, letting it heat up. Once you've done that, then you can come over and get ready to start pumping. You're going to pull your trigger and then slowly turn your material flow valve up. You don't want to have it turned all the way up. You want to turn it up slowly. That way it blows the air out of the line. It's not going to blow material all over. So we've done that. We still don't seem to have any material flowing. There's a couple of things to check. If you look up inside these slots here, you're going to see a couple of chain drives. Now the center drive motor is the drive motor that runs your pump. There's a sprocket right up here at the top, and that's what you're going to look at. When you pull your trigger on your wand, that sprocket should be turning. The more flow valve you have turned up, the faster that's going to turn. Now the other drive motor that's to the front of the machine has a chain that drives down lower 
that's your agitator and you can see that going around you have your agitator on so these are where we're going to start now and a couple of things to look at if we're not getting any movement out of the pump we want to make sure our pumps in the on position the forward position if we're still not getting any movement we're going to want to look at uh, troubleshooting our hose and wand in our trigger system but first we're going to go to a step ahead say you are pulling the trigger and the pump is running but you're not getting any material out of the hose and wand we're going to take a look at some tips and uh, show you what you need to look at to make sure the tip is clean on the end of the wand. Okay, now we're going to talk a little bit about tips, but first I want to talk a little safety here. If you're going to take a tip off the wand, you always want to make sure that you reverse that pump, make sure all the pressure's off of it, you need to have gloves on, all your safety PPE on whenever you're working around that, that wand. Also make sure that uh, on the wand we have a safety lockout on the trigger. Make sure that's in place and uh, then you can safely take that tip off. So as you can see here, this is a duckbill and the tip and this one is all blocked up. It's full of cold material. Was not able to get it heated up in the shoe box so you can't pump material through it. So you're going to want to get this off and clean it all out. You may have to take a screwdriver and run down through there to get some of that material out of it. What we want it to look like is this right here. As you can see, this one's good and clean and all the material's out. So once you put this back on, put it in the shoe box, get it warmed up a little bit, you should be ready to pump. You can also see here we've got some discs uh, this one is obviously all filled up with material, uh, was not able to heat inside the shoe box, so had to take this off and get it cleaned up. This one here still has a little bit of material down inside there. Uh, you may not be able to get that heated up and pumped out. So cleaning out your tips, making sure they're good, ready to go, or putting a brand new tip on. Obviously this is a straight tip good and clean, ready to go. Um, that can be a lot of problems on a Monday morning getting ready to pump. All right, now we're at the back of the machine here. We know we've got hot material. We still can't get it to pump. We've got a couple of tips for you. So we're gonna open up the control box here and we're gonna go to what we call the ice cube relay. And it's a little relay that's got a clear cover on the face of it. You can override it, there's a little green button at the top of it. So you reach in and just push that green button. It's gonna light up and it's gonna activate the pump. If it starts pumping and we're getting material out, we know everything on our hydraulics and up to this point is good. So now we're gonna move forward, look at our junction box and then up into the hose and wand to see if we can find out what's going on there. Okay, now we're going to do a little little checking here. We've opened up the junction box on the back, and this is where your wand wiring comes in and wires into the, uh, the melter itself. And basically all we want to do here is just check and make sure that all our connections are good and tight and there's no breaks or any visually uh, anything wrong with these wires. Now the blue wires, you have three here, those are your heating wires. This is what heats up the hose and wand. The red wires are going to be your trigger wires. And this white uh, cable has two wires inside that. That is your sensor wire. So that's the sensors inside the hose and wand. Now, if you are going to ever check your, your heating wires, you want to make sure you have a clamp-on type meter and clamp over that wire to check your amperage. That is the recommended way of doing that. So just make sure that you use a clamp-on type meter there. So once we've done that, we've checked all our wires are in good shape. The connections are tight. We're gonna move over here to the wand and talk a little bit about things to look at on the wand. Okay, we've checked our connections in the junction box and now we wanna look at our wiring. And this is the pigtail that comes from the hose up to the wand. So we have a connection right here that screws on 
and once in a while this may loosen up a little bit. So what you want to do is make sure there's no movement here. If there is, tighten this up. There's a little outside ring here that tightens up onto the threads. Do that and then pull your trigger. If it starts to work, then we just had a little bit of loose connection. If you're still not getting any movement, your pump's not turning, then we're going to want to look at our pigtail and our trigger here, and we're going to do that next. Okay, now we've isolated our problem somewhere here in, in our uh, wand. Uh, we've let it cool down, we've pulled it off the machine. We're going to pull this cover off. There's several screws here you're going to need to take out. And we're going to start looking at some of these wires here. We just want to make sure that all our wires have got good connections and they're all in good shape. And another thing we can check real quick is just to make sure that we're activating this little switch right here when the trigger's being pulled, making sure something's not blocking it up. So we're doing that. That looks like it's working good. One of the things we can check is our cable here. If we've damaged the cable or there's physically some damage to it, these cables can be replaced. Um, it's kind of like replacing a, a cord on an electric drill. We just have some wires here that have to unplug and the brown wire here that comes off and then this is going to pop right out. You put a brand new one in there, wire it back in with a couple of these wires and the clips. It'll be on your new wire and it should be ready to go. Now if the trigger's bad and we're not getting voltage through the trigger, then we've got a couple of screws here. Again, you pull a couple of wires off here. Pull the trigger out, put the new one back in, reset your, your uh, finger trigger here, and just make sure you've got good movement there. That will be activating your switch. Once you've got that done, then you're going to reassemble the cover, put the screws back on. When you get the cover on, make sure you, you've got the movement in the trigger here and we haven't jammed anything up. Get the screws all back on, get it put back on the machine, hook back up to your hose and your wand to the hose, get it fired back up, you'll have to let it heat a little bit, get it warmed back up, and then we're going to test it and see if we've got power, make sure we're pumping. So these were just a few a little quick troubleshooting ideas to help you get you up and running. If none of these have helped and you're still having problems, feel free to reach out to Craftco, any one of our service centers, and any one of our distributors across the country. We'd be more than happy to help you, maybe troubleshoot it a little more over the phone or bring it in, and we will get it up and running for you. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day.